Joined here by one of the legends of Pepperdine basketball, Doug Christie, sitting down and chatting with us for a little while. Good to see you again, Doug. Good to see you. You are so kind, yeah. legend. Just, uh, it's, it's very accurate. Uh, very I appreciate accurate. it. I appreciate it. <laughs> and great to see you come back here to your old stomping grounds. I want to dive into it. We're going to take you back. You're 18 years old. <laughs> what prompted you to choose Pepperdine? Well, being from Seattle, Washington, and coming from <coughs> where, where I came from, uh, I was recruited by the Washington Huskies in Washington State. Unfortunately, basketball was my life, and I didn't, as an athlete and a student athlete, I didn't cover the student part. So I was a Proposition 48. I came to, to Pepperdine, and I just absolutely fell in love, obviously with the view, but something drew me to Coach Asbury and something drew me to the fact that I, I thought it was time for me to leave Seattle and I had to venture out as a young man and, and try to figure myself out and Pepperdine just really allowed me that opportunity. So many on, on the court accolades for you here at Pepperdine, two-time All-American, two-time Conference Player of the Year. When you look back at your time here, what are your most memorable moments? Um, Really, when I look back now, my, mm -hmm. mem my most memorable moments was waking up and looking at the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's hard you, to go against you, that. It is, because you, as you grow and you, you age, you learn how to appreciate things. And I learned how to appreciate what, what Pepperdine, they put me in a situation that was great for, it was just the perfect storm for a kid like mm -hmm. me. But uh, coming to Firestone Fieldhouse, running out with the crowds, LMU games, uh, playing in the dog pound up in up in Gonzaga, mm -hmm. uh, going on the road with the team and bonding and hanging out, uh, getting yelled at by Coach Asbury. <laughs> those uh, those were the times that just just being a team, being able to hang out with my teammates in, in the locker room, and they didn't treat me as you know, hey, you're an all American. It was none of that. Mm -hmm. They just, hey, you're Doug, and let's let's yeah. play, and that was awesome. Yeah. Special camaraderie. Yes, it is. It's something that uh, it's something that athletics gives you that not a mm -hmm. lot of other stuff. Because not only do we, you know, in business you you compete mentally, in athletics you compete mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. So there's that thing like you know we break bread together, we break blood together, mm -hmm. we sweat and we cry and we compete together. It just adds a special element that not a lot of other things in life give you. Yeah. You know, Doug, you're admired as a player for your all around capability you can pass score defend which one of those attributes came natural more natural to you and which areas of your game did you really have to put in some extra work in well I would say the one part that came really natural was passing for mm -hmm. whatever reason growing up in Seattle I, I was a Sonics fan with Gus Williams and Dennis Johnson and all those mm -hmm. guys when they won but I was a Magic Johnson fan and I just loved how he orchestrated the game yeah. and passed the ball so I was, I, I was never a selfish player. I enjoyed mm -hmm. scoring because mm -hmm. I could, but I also enjoyed passing the ball and watching some of my teammates have mm -hmm. success at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the biggest areas that I worked on that ended up helping me in the NBA was defense. Yeah. I was never known as a defensive player, and it was funny because Coach Asbury would always say, you can do anything that you want out there. If you focus on it, you can make it happen. And defense wasn't one of those things. When I was in college, I was thinking defense. Give me my, give me my points. Yeah, my you glory. know, I want to score. I want to have fun, pass sure. the ball. I'm, I'm thinking Magic Johnson. Woo! Yeah. And then I got into the NBA, and uh, Pat Riley told me, he said, you got to find something that you do good. Mm -hmm. And I just started learning position, used my athleticism to help me in that area. Mm -hmm. I could still score, but it was something that uh, – I understand what the team needed, and that was something that I worked really hard at was becoming a defensive player. And growing up and coming here, I would have never thought that was something that I would have done, but mm -hmm. it really helped me round out my game. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a great testament and to come because in your NBA career, one of the elite defenders throughout, the, yeah. throughout your entire tenure in the NBA. So I'll ask you, what, in your opinion, what makes a good defender? All you young players up there, listen, listen it, up to this. No, you know, it's not a long answer. Mm. What, what makes a good defender is heart. Mm. Because it's not glory that you're going to get on the defensive end. You're not going to stop them. Mm -hmm. So you, 
you have to have the heart to keep on going, to keep on trying, to, to understand that your goal isn't to, that's the ultimate goal is to stop the guy. But what you're trying to do is you're just trying to make it as difficult on him as possible. And when you run into somebody like Kobe Bryant, who played great defense and he scores 40, that can be demoralizing for some people. But I'd walk away and I would try to take the positives from it. So uh, a short answer would be yeah. definitely you just have to have the heart to keep on playing and yeah. competing. Persevering. Yes.